Hello, aloha, welcome everybody to our first episode of Turning Points. This is the show about people's turning point, major life events. So we have no dogma, no theory, but real people with real stories. And we have a lot of people here uh, join us from different parts of the world. We have Loha and Ling. Hi, how, how are you doing? And we also have Shima, right? Hi, <laughs> thank you for here to support us. So I'm very happy to see everybody. So um, so the show is about turning points. So I don't know what turning points mean to people. So maybe it means different things. So I can imagine maybe there's at least three different uh, turn, different kinds of turning points. Maybe um, that maybe they are um, uh, maybe uh, you are looking forward to having a new baby. You know, a new life of being a new mom. You're looking forward to that. That's a major life event. Maybe you're looking forward to graduation. So you know you been waiting for getting that degree and or maybe you are um finally you get your retirement you know work so hard at your entire life and this is such a big new chapter in life right and i also know that there are people who have had really good life very stable life stable job there's nothing much that they they can complain about but there's that sort of like under underneath itch it's sort of I have this, this little itch in life, like maybe there's more in life that's ahead of them. So they are maybe looking for the um, turning points in their life. So that's maybe another kind. And then maybe there's another kind where maybe, um, you know, you got into, say, a car accident or you invest in the stock and the stock market crash or you receive a diagnosis of, say, cancer. And so those are different kinds of chapter in life. And I can totally relay as I was recently diagnosed with cancer. When I say recently, it was November of 2021. So that was a huge turning point in my life. I feel like my life was crashing down on me. And I was at a crossroad. I realized that everything that my life has prepared me did not prepare me for this. So as I was navigating, I'm still navigating through that period. I, I also started to wonder how other people have dealt with their turning points, their major life events. You know, what happened, what choices they made, what was the consequences, and if there's any long, long range impact in their life. So that was the motivation of this show. So today, on my very first show, so I have the honored guest. So let me bring Helen into the show. So we have Helen here. Helen, um, I put a long description of her credential in the video below, you can see. So um, she is, uh, has a PhD, so Dr. Helen, by the way. So she is a PhD, she has a PhD from sociology degree and has worked as a, a full-time lecturer to uh, administrator from various universities from San Francisco, State, San Francisco State to Harvard, I believe. And then, you know, work uh, for nonprofit and even published her own book, uh, something about intuition and business. So she, in other words, she's well accomplished. However, she's here today, not because of all that. She's here today because she's a very dear friend of mine and somebody I really lean into, especially during my hard time. I reach out to Helen and she's always there to help and to support me um, more than ways you can imagine. And we always had heartfelt conversations and always, I, I actually look up to her. She's such an inspiration for me. <laughs> Helen, so can you uh, say quick hi to, we have people online now, so. Yes, you know, Grace, I'm hearing two voices. I'm hearing, I'm hearing two voice streams. Oh, okay. Um, gee, I don't know if everybody else is hearing two voices. Yes. So go ahead. I don't know now how to it's... fix that. <laughs> yes. We're all hearing two voices. 
everybody's hearing two voices from me. Oh, uh, yeah. I, okay, I, I have no idea how to fix that. I apologize. So do, do we want to just kind of roll with the flow and it's just see very how hard. Happens? It's very mm. hard to make sense of it because it's it's a few seconds behind. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, so it sounds like somebody's here. OK. And so um, I am not sure oh. we were. Yeah. So people type in the chat. Um, uh, somebody is late and somebody's early morning and they're hearing okay. So, uh, um, Helen, so can you uh, make sense of what I'm saying? If you're hearing yes. two voices, <laughs> I, I can I can tell what you're saying. So I'll just roll with it. Yeah, please roll with this. Thank you so much. That's part of the spirit. So you want to do a quick introduction of yourself and say hi to the people here online and. Uh, who are watching this on the replay. Okay, well, hi, thanks so much. This is such a big moment for you, Grace. And to have you, your inaugural event, it's, it's a real privilege and an honor for me to be included in this. There's so much that you and I share. And I think that's one of the reasons we are uh, here today and talking about this. We both have been reading the same body of work for a long time. We both have been dealing with medical issues. We're both academics and we're both left and right brain people at the same time. <laughs> we both love technology and cosmology. <laughs> so I think, you know, this is a place to start holding the both and in the mind at once, in conscious awareness at once. So that means holding both is holding the knowing that is conscious, also holding that knowing that is unconscious and perhaps occurs in dreams or body talking to us or all sorts of other clues that we're getting, saying, uh, I can't get your attention, so let me hit you over the head with a two by four. <laughs> Cancer. <laughs> oh, or yeah. some other sweet, small voice, like a bird or something else, or a flower or a beautiful sunset. Yes, yeah, so, so talking about not paying attention and then got hit by a four by four. So, and then we both experienced that. So you want to share a little bit of your experience of that? <laughs> Being, being, which one? Being, I'll, I won't start with the hit two by four. It's I'll start the other side, the right brain stuff, and that is being aware of early on that there was something more than what meets the eye, and that started very young for me. Uh, as as you know, the stories about speaking a language I didn't know or uh, having information about somebody in the family who hadn't told me anything and getting in trouble because I was getting in people's business without knowing that I was doing it. <laughs> That's one kind of two by four. <laughs> and then the other has to do with being in a workplace and going, uh, where I was not happy and saying, is this all there is? If not now, when will I live my life? If I have to leave an arm or a leg 
at home to go to work, is this the way I should be working? And that happened many years ago and what resulted in my leaving the mainstream academy to work in metaphysics. Um, another moment came more recently when I was diagnosed with cancer. And uh, I'm going, wait a minute, I, I understand these things. What do you mean, cancer? Why me? Why now? I'm enlightened. I know these things. And of course, it was simple baloney. I didn't know something. Yeah, that is exactly how I feel. And that's very candid that you just said, right? So when I hear the diagnosis, so I had the same reaction. I right? like, no, this is not true. And I was in shock. I was in shock. I was in, sh in this deepest shock. And uh, what, yeah, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about our, our <laughs> let's talk about our cancer diagnosis and uh, how, yeah, what, walk us through what was going through your mind when you heard about it. You know, I think the first thing was probably, you know what, I'm, I've had a good life. I'm in my mid seventies. Um, you know, I guess I could check out now, <laughs> but I was also at the happiest point in my life. And sometimes people leave because they're happy. Sometimes people leave because they feel complete. And so one of the questions I had to ask myself is, are you complete? You're happy, are you complete? And then I had to deal with those things that are undone, unspoken, unwritten, not yet offered. What is my purpose and have I fulfilled it? Or have I been ducking and hiding uh, in the metaphysical closet? So am I going to check out or not? And things were pretty touch and go there for a while. We, we didn't think I would last the weekend. And, and at that time, we thought two months was generous. So now it is uh, six years later. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> so I'm either stubborn or there's still something left to do. <laughs> yes, there's definitely, there's definitely some stubbornness. And I remember, I cannot believe it has been, <laughs> has been six, seven years. I remember I was like, trying to reach out, trying to find out what happened to you or not happened to you. Right. And I was like, you know, like wondering and trying to reach out to, you know, people to know you. And, uh, and that has, it has been that long. And so I think it touched something really important, right? So are we ready? You know, are we ready to check out? And I like that expression, right? Are we ready to check out? And that could be, I'm ready to go because I, I'm happy. And then this is probably, or I'm already at a summit of my life. And then, you know, this is a nice place to, to stay, to, to, to end my play and the reset. Right. Um, but then, but then I were also hearing from you to say is, however, there's that another voice that's, I like the word you use unspoken. So there's that unspoken voice that now all of a sudden surfaced to say that, wait a minute, you know, I know you are happy, but that's one at one level. But there are other things that's probably unfulfilled, right? You have more things that you feel like you can do, you can come, you can accomplish, you can contribute, and and then that. So what is this about that? Those unspoken voices. Why do we have to wait until, <laughs> say, a cancer diagnosis to? finally hear them. Can you unpack that a little bit more for us? 
Well, it's probably pretty simple. We're stubborn. <laughs> I think that's probably it in a nutshell. You know, it's like you weren't listening. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think I am too. I, like I mean, I could make it more you. complicated if you like. <laughs> it's so true, so true. No, I think the simple truth is the best, right? Like we're stubborn and we're not listening. And then why are we stubborn, by the way? <laughs> what? What is it about that stubbornness? Like, what what is it about it that? I think some of that, you know, Grace. I think both of us are control freaks. I'm still hearing the feedback, so I'm a little slow in responding. Uh, we we like to manage things. We like to control things. Um, we like to know what's going on. And so some of it, I think stubborn is, is a part of it, but I think there's another serious part of it. And that is listening and trusting that voice. A am I being narcissistic to think that there's, or arrogant to think that there's still something for me to say and who would care? Uh, why am I so special that I have to hang in here? Um, I know my honey would not be happy if I checked out, but I also know that no one, at least based on what I've read, if, if you are ready to go, nothing can save you. And if you're ready to stay, nothing can kill you. <laughs> so the, the work was inner work. It didn't have anything to do with anybody else, anything else. It had to do with my digging deep into the self, not the expectations for the self that others or I placed on it, but why this existence in this time have I completed offering what I have to offer in this existence in this time? And then the answer was close, but not quite, not yet. And so hop to it. We've got the clock is running. Stop procrastinating. <laughs> yes, I, I I totally right now I totally feel the the clock is running part. Okay, so that helps at least for people like myself who can never um, you know push forward, who can never cross that barrier of um, am I good enough to offer anything and that is like my lifelong thing about myself so there's you know self-image i i also hear uh -huh. you say about that self-image right like what is it who am i what do i have to offer right and i'm looking at there's like 20 something people here online today okay so like <laughs> it is <laughs> this means a lot to me you know it's not 2100 but this still means a lot to me, right? I mean, yes. there are people who care. There, you have messages to say, right? But for the for the life of me, you know, I have this self image of of not being good enough, and and you know, there's always somebody better, and then they can do you know all these wonderful things, and and so so you mentioned about that self image of of self doubting, actually, you know, self loathing, and also that trust you mentioned trust and can you unpack that a little bit for us like what do you mean by trust and how does that look like hmm. well i think some of it is is oh that's sweet some of it is um who am i carrying around in my head with me Am I trusting myself? Am 
I trusting that others who told me I was unworthy are to be believed? Am I trusting that the butterfly is as important as the elephant? Am I trusting in good intention? Can I trust that I'm a good person and that I don't have a hidden agenda? Or that someone else is a good person and doesn't have a hidden agenda? So I think with all of that education, it's so easy to talk ourselves into and out of things. It's so easy to create constructs that get in the way of this direct communication, not only intrapersonal communication, but also interpersonal communication. And I guess I've decided to trust, even if I don't know what that looks like and whether or not it will be pleasing to another. What about you? What about your trust? You're asking me these questions. I'm hoping this is a conversation you'll answer them. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. This is a conversation, definitely. The trust, I, I think I definitely have, um, have to work on my trust. And I think you said there's that self-trust and the trust of others and maybe trusting that the universe is abundant and is on our side. And I think trust has different levels, right? So do I believe in those principles? For example, you know, people are nice, people are generally nice, the universe is on our side, and you know, the universe is there to support us, and so on. Do I do I believe that? And I can tell you that, yes, I, I believe that in general, I think that's how the, the universe uh, runs in general as a principle, right? But the question is, do I trust that that happens to me? And you know, you see there are different levels, right? So it's almost like, yeah, do I, do I believe people win lottery? Of course I believe people win lotteries. People win lotteries all the time. It's just like it doesn't have to happen to me, right? So, so, so that, I think there's like that, that levels. And I realized that um, it is my, my relationship with that, uh, my personal God, that there's a little disconnect. Mm. Mm. With your personal God, your personal, say more about that. So, so it is, you know, our personal God is, is, is there for us. So we have this customized, so to speak, you know, a, a life bl blueprint that we agreed on and then you know i'm here on earth to experience that right and then somehow along the way that that is disconnected and now i'm here there that's why i feel like a lot of most of my adult life i feel like i'm alone i'm lonely i'm here by myself and then because that connection is lost that i feel like I have to try and work very hard because help is not available. And I, so I think that's a bad cycle, right? Because then you let, and then you become, you always feel lonely and you always work hard and all, you always think that the help is not there. And then therefore that connection with your personal God, which is supposed to be always there. And then, you know, he's, the guy is supposed to take care of you on your side, you know, prov provide resources, is no longer available. And, and, and I think that in, in that process, I realized that I, I repressed, uh, repressed a lot of my emotions and a lot of my desires. And uh, I'm not a very <laughs> follow the rule kind of person in many ways. Okay, I have this very spontaneous and wild side that I uh -huh. never really allow that to happen, right? And then so, Doing this, for example, is like totally uncomfortable. Like 
<laughs> well, there's people listening and like, why am I doing it? I'm talking to my best friend Helen. And I'm like, what are people thinking about me, right? So like, you know, all of those still exist, right? Because of that, that trust issue, right? However, the ironic part about this current situation is, honestly, I don't know how long I have, my time is on earth, right? So, so I cannot waste my time thinking about what people think of me anymore, right? I have to, I have to think about like, what do I really want to do? Like with whatever time I have on earth, right? So I've always been a very, uh, not, maybe not always, as far as I can remember as a, that, an adult, I'm always more on the reserved side and not willing mm -hmm. to take risk and the diagnose <laughs> helps me to break away from that <laughs> forces forces it does it does because i'm i'm saying like if not this then it's that else right so do i want the else or do i want this well yes i i'm getting the feedback so the measure is what we're both being told is that the trust that we think we have is not really present because if it were we would not need these external signals that the trust is not there and so we are being pulled on the coattail saying, uh, not yet. Surrender has not yet occurred because when trust, true trust, deep trust of self and other occurs, surrender is possible. And surrender is not surrender to an adversary or a warrior. It, surrender is allowing fulfillment in some strange way that I can't even imagine, but know is there. And so it's putting that mind aside for a moment and putting that thinking, that judging aside for a moment. And so I know if I'm still sick or I'm feeling pretty good right now, actually, <laughs> but if I'm feeling pretty good, well, maybe I'm getting a handle on this trust thing. And if I start feeling bad, well, maybe, oh, do you remember what it felt like when you felt good? So that's those those are like the the building biofeedback that we got for people like us who are yes. uh, stubborn and uh, like a little bit lost connection with that personal God. I mean that's what I said. And I I love what you said about that deeper trust, that surrender to fulfillment. I think that's that's that sense of wondering. You know that that sense yes. of like like wow you know there's that possibility out there that 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 wondering about all the excitements and you're curious about what is ahead of you right instead of like everything is planned so that you already know that i can mm -hmm. already see myself you know 20 years from now the life i live right versus like I have this sense of wondering, you know, let me see, let me explore and, and, and with the curiosity and then see what life can bring with the trust that that, that is going to be a fulfilled um, journey, right? Mm -hmm. And that sounds, I'm, I'm having goosebumps just by saying those things because it just sounds so wonderful. And, and the reason I have goosebumps is also that little other grace is pulling my pulling me back, right? Saying like, mm -hmm. oh yes, oh yes, but then there's like a lot of but, right? Like but, yes. you know, but this oh, and but but's that, a right? fabulous word. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stay up all night getting rid of but. <laughs> seriously, seriously. So what are some of your buts? 
Well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've got so many. I've got so many. I can't even start. What I, what I rather do, I was thinking when you were talking about the trust and how with us in these ways we manage the universe, I have two quick stories. One has to do with living in Santa Fe, trying to build this organization, not knowing where the next meal was coming from, the next opportunity was coming from, managing everything and everybody. And then I had a volunteer staff person working with me who lived uh, nearby. And I get a call. She tells me about this call I got from a man in Florida whom I did not know, had never met, who called and said, is this Helen Stewart? Uh, I've been told I need to look for Helen Stewart. And I think this is the Helen Stewart I'm supposed to find. And I'm going, are you kidding me? So my assistant comes to me and says, there's this person by the name of Kip on the phone. And he said, he's supposed to know you and help you. And I, I you know, it's like, okay, what's sc scam of the week? <laughs> I meet this man. He, I talked to my board of trustees. Is this for real? The very next week, here he and his life partner come to Santa Fe, visit, and they say, you are real, and we're going to help you. They find an office. They furnish the office. They do a series of interviews to market, and they pay my business expenses for a year. Now, come on. If I were, quote, managing <laughs> the universe, how could you make up a story like that? It's an absolutely true story. There's no business plan that has a 65-year-old European man from Florida say, I'm going to take care of you for a year, and you've never met. You know, there's no business plan. Trust. The only way, the only way to lean into that is to trust. There's, there's no shortcut. There's no alternative <laughs> but to go, okay, I guess I'm in for the ride. And it was a fabulous, fabulous ride. What a beautiful human being. And we worked together for several years until he passed. You know, you have shared that story with me many times before, but every time I hear it, I got goosebumps, right? Because it's just like magic, but magic does happen, right? And yeah, people who are here, you know, or listen to the replay, if you have magical things, big or small happen in your life, you know, do type in the chat, say yes, yes, yes. If you have big or small, say yes. Okay, you have let magical things happen, and we believe in magic. Yeah, that's that is really a that is really a wonderful experience, and um, exactly, there's no business plan for that, right? <laughs> yes. So it's like if I could do that, I can do anything. If you could do that, you can do anything. You know exactly. So why all this? Storm und Drang, you know, why all this worry and stress and I got to get sick first and, you know, hang it up. <laughs> uh, seriously, that's what I've been telling my friends recently, right? Like, they're like, oh, you're so brave. You're doing like YouTube. I'm like, actually, I'm not that brave. I'm kind of scared to death. But <laughs> this is like, this diagnose helps to push me over that self-doubt and you know not doing things right so and i said 
don't wait until you have a diagnose. Thank you. <laughs> Do it now, right? This is not fun to have a diagnose, to be honest with you guys, okay? So, yeah. There you are. I know, right? Yeah, just start now and and you know move forward with fear but then with the trust as well right with the trust and then it's okay you're afraid and but also move forward with that yeah so knowing yeah, so it's not like knowing knowing that you that the universe has your back people say that but you i've known you long, i've known you for several years now come on the universe has both of our backs in spite of our stubbornness, in spite of all that stuff, we still have, look at the magic that we've shared. We know better, don't we? And this we YouTube, do. people are saying, we care about you. You're not alone. You're not alone. Yes. And yes, yeah, so this is yes, an Marina. incredible. Yeah, this is an incredible. Um, opportunity to really share our lives and in this such a public way and it's very new to me in this this way as well and uh, so we have many here say this is like our new chapters so yeah so <laughs> yeah i feel so i'm very apprehension coming into this right not knowing how vulnerable I am willing to be. I don't even know if that's the right expression, but you know what? I trust you, Helen, probably more than I trust myself. <laughs> so I, because so we'll you, trade. <laughs> I will trade. <laughs> you trust me. I trust you and we'll be fine. <laughs> that is so, okay. We have a deal. We have a deal. That's great. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Right. So we all need to have a little bit more uh, self-reliance and self-trust and then really trust in the universe and then like, look, see, like <laughs> I have Helen and then she gives me so much confidence in, in doing this. And, you know, I mean, she has her reputation, okay? She has her reputation as a professional, as a person, okay? And then she's here today doing this with me, okay? And that means a world, right? Because she supports me and this is what she's willing to do, right? Put, put her reputation on the line. <laughs> Trust. And so I really, because of, because of her, because of Helen, like, I feel like I can do this. I can do this. And I, I think. And vice versa. I'm not accustomed to going on YouTube and talking about my medical situation. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not, you know, I used to spend time thinking, well, if I talk about these things, how, what kinds of limitations do I set on myself? Who in my family is going to be watching this and thinking about this? Who, what adversaries or potential adversaries are there out there waiting for me to die now that they know I've been diagnosed? You know, at some point, it's like, what the hey? If not now when if i do not live in the present moment now when will be an appropriate moment this is the moment stop walking around with all those people in my head let them go play in traffic I, that reminds me of a story I heard a long time ago. I don't remember the detail of the story, but like somebody who believes in God or anybody's, uh, you know, believe in God. And then so in this particular case, so he like his town is flooded, right? So so the flood is coming, and then so 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 he prayed to God, like you know, I know you, I know, I know you're gonna save me, right? So so the first like the the, the police came, right? The police came and say, hey, you know, everybody evacuate, everybody evacuate, right? And then he stayed put, thinking like, oh no, don't worry, my God, it's gonna save me, right? 
And so the flood comes and the water goes up, right? So he had to climb up to his roof, right? Because, you know, now the water is really high. And then so now uh, the, the firefighter, you know, they got they are on the boat. They, they, they roll, roll, roll and they say, hey, you know, come, you know, we we'll come here to rescue you. And he's like, don't worry, I'm going to stay put. You know, my God is going to come save me, right? <laughs> and then and the, eventually father is like almost to, the, to, to here, right? He's like almost drowned, right? And so now the helicopter comes, right? Like here, 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 like, let's rescue you, right? And he's like, don't worry, you know, Oh, my guy is going to save me <laughs> and then so eventually he he died and then he went to heaven and then he went to see his god and he got really mad right he's like god you know like i believe in you and then why did you not save me right <laughs> and god was like you know i tried three times <laughs> i said to <laughs> him There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you so, go. Yeah. Hmm. So it's, it's the moment, right? We not now what when, right? So um for me definitely the the maybe there yeah. are questions. Do you think people have oh. questions or wanna tell a story hmm. of trust? Yeah, so yes, thank you. <laughs> right. Yes, we should invite questions. Look at me, I'm the host. Yes, so if you have questions, you can type in the chat. Maybe we can entertain that. And I don't know if we have the answer per se, right? Um, um, but um, maybe we can, you know, entertain that questions. And so the positive experience from, existing, um, from exercising your trust, keep building up your trust in yourself and your higher power, right? Yes, higher power, definitely. Everybody has, you know, you identify with higher power differently, but Hopefully that is like a continuous um, positive cycle of depositing trust to our trust bank so that the self-reliance will be more spontaneous instead of needing a business plan. I, I, I really love what you said about um, having a business plan versus just being more spontaneous and trust. Okay, so there's no question so far. <laughs> Okay, yeah, maybe we didn't give them enough time to to come up with a question. Oh, uh, yeah, um, my my fault as a host for the first time. So, but also you can give us a comment about how much how how you like the show so far, and then you know, we can appreciate it. And um, thank Helen. You know, maybe you can say something to Helen as well. So you can also type in the chat, and um, we will. But if you watch this as a replay, you can also replay, you can also type in the chat and I will also make sure that I check out all the comments as well. Okay, mm -hmm. so I know Helen, we, we didn't really, <laughs> so when I invite Helen the first time, right, she asked me like, what's the format, what's the topic? I was like, I have no idea. I didn't even have the name turning points. It just, I was just thinking about, you know, cooking up different ideas. So I, she didn't, I didn't even have anything. And she said, yes. And then she asked me about format. I said, I don't know. We're, we're just going to show, show up and talk. And I, <laughs> I wanted to have a really intimate conversation. And so that's what you see today. So, um, yeah. So I know we didn't talk about, um, how long this will be and, uh, you know, what, how do we, I, we didn't talk about anything. That's what I'm trying to say. So we just, you know, follow flow and go well, as we go. Well, you you have you have grace you have said this is turning points you've given us a focus you've which which raises questions about responsibility about agency the 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 right the authority we have to shape our lives or simply be at the effect of our lives. You have, because we've both read similar metaphysical things, we have a, a foundation of, of thought which helps us frame questions of trust or probabilities that, that there may be a version of us that decides to live in a version of us that decides to die and that we have in every moment of our lives choice 
we and that whatever choice we make to stay or go, we're never done and it's never done and there is no judgment. So since you invited me to, to be here today, I've been thinking about that. You know, there is no judgment. And what we're finally with trust, what we gain is the end of judgment. We gain the end of fear, recognizing that choice is perennial, eternal, filled with extraordinary possibility, here, there, or elsewhere. So I have a hunch we're both not going anywhere anytime soon, <laughs> even though we've been shipped out of here a zillion times already in the last few years. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to hang out for a while. We got to hang you out for continue, a while. You continue to offer turning points. And, you know, people say that our friendship is clear to see and it's very precious. And it is extremely precious for me. And, and me. Thanks, Dan, to say that. Thank you all folks for being so open and willing to share. And thank Nicole for thanking us for sharing our experiences. And uh, <laughs> thank you so much. And um, so so we can be in another... Do you see that question? Do you see the yeah. question, Grace? There is a question. Yes. So the question is, could a you, in another probability, make a decision that affects you in this probability, or perhaps it creates a new probability? Wow, this is like a te definitely a Helen question. <laughs> Grace is going to defer to Helen. No. <laughs> you. <laughs> No, because you and I have read the same book, so don't even go there. Uh, <laughs> the short answer is yes. And I think I think that in this part part of this has to do with the nature of time. Mm -hmm. And probability only exists within a context of time an experience. And, you know, we read the Seth material where all time is simultaneous. So everything I do shapes not only my future, but also impacts my past. If I, now this is going to sound really weird, but if I could not change my past, there would be no new probability for me to experience because I would be stuck in the judgment. I'd be stuck in the doubt. I'd be stuck in all those stories. So from this moment, I see another possibility. And that seeing like a firework branches in every direction of the universe touching all of the various expressions of myself as Helen that I could be and all those personalities that may be offshoots of Helen or a different version of the essence of Helen in a different time and place, changing race, gender, culture. So, Somebody in that, that I used to be a heads, I, I know there's, I have this notion of being somebody who chopped off heads in 15th century, something or other. Um, you know, that, that person could decide not to chop off heads anymore. 
and that contributes to my being such a pacifist in my life right now. You know, I'm just mm -hmm. this absolutely died in the wool pacifist. But I have not always been, I'm sure of it. And because I'm sure of it, I cannot judge others. There you go, that works. <laughs> who are on the same clock as I. I cannot expect others to come to the conclusions that I have come to or express their probabilities the way I have chosen to express mine in this moment. Does that make sense? I don't know if that answered the question. So the answer is absolutely. And it creates a new probability. Yes. So what I'm hearing is my, my level of understanding <laughs> is that what? the point of my level of understanding is that the point of power is at the present moment. And no matter what circun circumstances we're in, we always have the choice. So Always. everybody can see why Helen is invited, right? She's so brilliant. She's so profound. Stop and Grace, enough. Ask her any enough. questions. And I, mean, I just, I am seriously look up to her. So, um, so with that, I'm going to um, thank Helen and thank everybody who's here today and those who join us from the replay. And until next time, we will see you in the next turning point. Bye. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Helen. Aloha. Bye. <laughs>